Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I'm going to be going over how to set up uh, emulation station on a Windows computer. Um, the reason I'm making this video is because when I first got emulation station, I realized that there's a lot of support for RetroPie and setting it up on a, on a Raspberry Pi, but not a lot of uh, support for setting it up on a Windows computer. So um, I finally got it working and I just want to share how to get it working. So hopefully you don't have to go through as much stuff as I did. So um, you want to start off by installing on Windows if you haven't already. And then you're also going to want to install RetroArch, which you can get from libretro.com. The download page, go down to Windows. You're going to want to download RetroArch, and you're also going to want to download the cores. Uh, those are just zip files. So once you have Emulation Station installed, you'll have a dot .emulation station folder. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is create a folder called systems and then unzip RetroArch into your systems folder and then create a new folder inside of your RetroArch folder called libretro and uh, unzip all, your, all of your cores into there um, which will come in handy later. Um, so the next thing that we're going we're gonna to do is set up a ROMs folder. So create another folder called ROMs and then inside of here, um, you can see I only have two folders as an example, but you're going to be using, actually, you're going to be using these short path names. Looks like I closed out of tab. So we have all these little short title names. They can really be anything you want, but it just makes it, um, when I created my config file, I used these short names. So if you used my config file in my download fold in my, uh, that I'm providing for you, uh, you're going to want to use these names. So I have NES and uh, SNES set up here, and then I have ROMs inside. Um, so here is my systems config file that I have, and it's mostly using RetroArch uh, emulators, but it also has um, the GameCube Dolphin and the Wii Dolphin. So that is what I have and I'm gonna be giving this to you in the description of this video there will be a download link uh, for this and as long as you have all your folders set up how I showed you then you should be good to go um, so if you set that up exactly how I said when you open up emulation station if you have ROMs in the folders then it should open up just like this you might have to set up your controls real quick and then so I even though that config file has like 10 or 11 emulators in there there's only two different systems that actually have ROMs so that's what it's showing um, and if you were to open the ROMs they open just like that and they're in full screen because I pressed F and uh, the cool thing about RetroArch is that it actually already has all the controls set up so if you're using a keyboard it has it all set up or actually if you're using a controller it's really really easy to set up as well and I'll probably make another video about that um, and then escape just closes it out and when you close it out it opens up um, it opens up emulation station again so that's really cool if you have it already set up with that config file and uh, so that's really all you need if, if you're not interested in actually learning how to write the config file um, if you are interested in how to write the config file then stick around a little bit and I'll just explain it um, basically just like how let me open up this one so put these two next to each other um, this will kind of they kind of walk you through it, but it, it can be a little confusing. So you have your the short name, which is uh, used internally, traditionally lowercase. So again, I would just use these uh, short names uh, on the website, um, which I did, NES. And then the full name, you can make it whatever you want, which I made it Nintendo Entertainment System. If you wanted to name it uh, NES, then you could. Um, the path, so for the path, this is the path that you'll find the ROMs, which if you set it up how I set it up, then it's going to look just like this. Um, this little squiggly line uh, basically does the same thing as this percent home path, which I'll explain in a second. But it's basically like a shortcut, so you don't have to write, you know, C 
users slash name. It instead you just have you just have a little squiggly line and you're good. Uh, the extensions are the uh, the extensions uh, for the ROMs that it's going to look for. So NES is .NES, um, N64 is V64 is Z64. So you just have to check and make sure you're using the right extensions. Uh, the command line. So for command, you can't use the squiggly line because this is actually a command line for Windows. So we're going to use the percent home path percent sign. What this does is if you actually opened up a folder on your computer and typed that in, it would bring you to that folder. So we're using the percent home path percent and then slash dot emulation station. And then what this is, is this is a path to RetroArch, which is our emulator. And then this slash L is meaning like launch. And then this is the directory for the core that we want to use for um, for RetroArch. And then this is what you put at the end, um, which is basically like the ROM name. Uh, I put quotation marks around it. The reason I put quotation marks around it is if there's any spaces in the ROM name, you need to have quotation marks. Otherwise, they won't find it. Um, and then this slash L and this is for RetroArch. If you're using non-RetroArch uh, emulators, then you're not going to be using that unless they have that in there in the program because for example GameCube right here I have GC for the name, Nintendo GameCube for the full name, here's my path for the ROMs, here's my extensions and then for my command line I use slash E because for the Dolphin command line slash E means execute, it's like execute this ROM which right here we have ROM raw which actually I should probably put quotes around and then we have the platform GC and then the theme GC which the theme you saw when I loaded it up there each emulator had a theme um, so that is that's about it if you have any questions feel free feel free to comment on the video and um, I look forward to any feedback because this is my first video but I'd love to keep doing more videos um, about some other things such as setting up controllers and stuff like that so let me know